I, I would probably skip my experience as a writer because it goes uh, really complicated and uh, uh, in such a short time it would be difficult to um, discuss how I approach this uh, Hungarian past which I'm writing about as a, th as a writer. Uh, I would rather present some um, 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 methods and approaches of performing arts, of contemporary performing arts, uh, from um, Romania, um, Russia and Hungary, just some, some brief examples of reenactment. As we saw, uh, reenactment is, is, is really has a very long tradition. We could go back even to the Baroque theatre uh, with the reenactments of wars and um, uh, also maybe uh, include uh, medieval passion plays as uh, part of reenactments. Um, and uh, also uh, to see, maybe this is a topic for discussion, to see reenactment as part of the official culture as it was proposed uh, uh, by Bakhtin uh, and see the brain of uh, the storming of the Winter Palace as um, staging history and creating history uh, as part of an official culture. Um, and uh, to see maybe, and this is also a topic, to see maybe the state anniversaries as reenactments, um, reenactment, reenacting the glorious past and not the um, traumatic past if we accept this division made by the American psychologist, psychiatrist, Monica Volkan, uh, um, characteristic for uh, the so called big group. It's a notion proposed by Volkan for the notion, instead of the notion of nation, the big group is defining itself by, by the chosen traumas and chosen glories. And uh, Trianon is probably our chosen trauma, as uh, it was stated in a um, conference uh, organized by the Hungarian Psychiatric um, um, Association two years ago and coming to the conclusion that the chosen trauma of the uh, big group called Hungarians is uh, the Trianon. It's this, pl this play, or uh, this um, um, Trianon Treaty um, event, which was organized by Transit, it's interesting because it is also a traumatic um, event and not part of the glorious past as uh, the battles and the so-called official um, uh, events reenacted uh, in official culture. The, the examples I'm, or the, the um, um, experiences of the reenactment in contemporary performing arts, I would like to share with you uh, have um, uh, two uh, different approaches. Um, and one would, I would call the reenactment by or through the body. And maybe I, we could show the picture of, um, <clears throat> of a um, performance uh, uh, by Alexandra Piric, who is a well-known young Romanian choreographer and dancer. Um, and this um, reenactment was uh, presented at the Monumenta in Petersburg. Um, and I choose this example um, because um, uh, all the work um, uh, Birch is creating is reenacting with the body, with the so-called soft power. She calls it the soft power, reenacting uh, the hard power, the iron, which is translated into the soft, the eternal translated into the ephemeral. Um, so she recreated some monuments. Uh, here is Lenin in Petersburg, but also Peters the first in in Petersburg, and um, a very awful um, monument in Bucharest, the Karajaliana. If someone knows that, made named by uh, the playwright, the great playwright Karajale, um, as also as a sign of. Um, protest uh, as uh, the contemporary art in public space is so little represented in this part of the world. Um, it's interesting that part of her project is also uh, that administrative process uh, because she's not, she's very much against jeopardizing the public space, to take the public space. 
but she is asking for permission to create such work. And the process, the administrative process to get permissions to create such work is also part of the, of the work as asking space for contemporary art, asking space for the body. And um, uh, it's also uh, documented how these processes, often very difficult in Russia and Romania, um, take place. Uh, she also created a show called um, um, Sorry, I can't remember the title of the show. Um, a show called a, sh a show which um, used um, cultural icons like the um, death of the Ceausescu couple or Slavoj Žižek talking, or Nadia Komanec at the Montreal Olympic Games, and also the Space Odyssey 2001, the, the monkey scene. And uh, the audience uh, had in, uh, got in hand a list of these big cultural icons and could choose and ask the artist to recreate uh, these uh, scenes. Um, which were uh, completely decontextualized. So decontextualization is a kind of notion I would like to introduce here, uh, where the context is forgotten and only the bodily image, since everything is translated into bodies, everything is only body, um, is kept. And this, this gesture of decontextualization um, it's also freeing the scene, and we could see the very same thing in this Trianon game. It's also freeing the scene from the, um, from the emotions, or uh, putting many emotions together, because we had uh, here in, the, in this Trianon game all, so many interests of different uh, representatives of the nations. Another name um, and another approach to uh, reenactment is the verbal one. And interestingly, as far as I observed the performing arts scene, these two don't mm, mix very much the bodily approach and the verbal one. And I include in reenactment, in the notion of reenactment, um, the whole tradition of documentary theatre, especially the so called verbatim, word by word theatre. Uh, which is flourishing in the past 20 years, um, but it has a very long tradition, of course, uh, from the German theater, in the German theater from the 20s onward and uh, the 60s, the second wave of the documentary. The Romanian uh, theater director, Janina Carbonariu, who is investigating the Securitate archives, uh, she created um, several performances based, based on uh, Segretata files using verbatim technique, so word by word technique. And in one of her uh, performances called X millimeters from Y kilometers, uh, referring to the very short text she used from a very, very, very large archive of the Securitate, she uh, reenacted an investigation of the dissident poet, Romanian poet Dorin Tudoran. And uh, it was a technique of, um, of hermeneutic research, I would call, because that very short text was performed again and again with the performative power of the body, of the um, accents, of the different points of view, of the changing roles. And the question was that there is an original, as uh, this is probably the question of this panel, what is the original, is there any original, and what is the uh, relationship to that original? Uh, there is an original text which is written down and exists in the Securitate archives, but do we know how that real scene of investigation um, unfold, what were the accent, what were the relationship between the people. So she is repeating this scene very many times in very many different ways to show that we don't have a clear understanding. We have the words, but we don't know by these words how a scene in a performative way, like a scene in reality, could unfold. Um, a rational example I would like to give is the approach of Theater Doc, which is a very well-known 
uh, very small uh, theater which is working <coughs> with documentary with verbatim, but not exclusively. Uh, and it's uh, called uh, one of the most um, uh, courageous theaters in Russia, or the most courageous theater in Russia. It's an independent um, uh, theater, which is showing in its documentary and verbatim plays the hidden, the unknown, or the invisible. And this reenactments of um, um, of uh, certain situations, certain uh, social groups, has a very clear aim, uh, which is to interfere directly with the social reality, to have um, an impact on the social reality, to change the things, to put it simply. And uh, to give only one example, if that such a thing can happen, is the case of Sergei Magnitsky. It's a performance um, which traveled a lot around the world. world. Um, Sergei Magnitsky was a lawyer who died in 2009 in a prison in Moscow um, and who uh, um, discovered uh, the uh, tax, um, uh, maf uh, the official uh, tax mafia in, uh, in Russia. He was um, uh, basically killed in, in a Moscow prison. And um, there is a diary Magnitsky kept and the play reconstructs the uh, very uh, end of uh, his life, the, the last um, day of his life basically. And uh, this performance could have really such an impact that in 2012 there was the Magnitsky Act passed in the US which listed 80 people, uh, Russian officials, who could not, um, who are prohibited their entrance to the US. It's called the Magnitsky Act, and later on the EU accepted this Magnitsky Act as well. Um, so to have a direct um, impact on reality, it's also, uh, can, can be part of this, uh, such a, uh, a reenactment of, of um, unfolding um, a hidden reality. And to give you a last uh, example, um, um, a Hungarian performance, and not only a performance, but a table game um, called Sociopoli. It, was, um, it is a game uh, created by a sociologist with a social worker, the sociologist uh, investigating Hungarian party, uh, Bas László. And this uh, table game, um, uh, the, the, the model of this table game is the American Monopoly, which is a play of capitalism, and Sociopoly is a pe play of poverty. Uh, the model is um, a, um, basically a Hungarian village where very um, uh, poor people live, and the numbers you are playing with as a character, as a, a villager, are real current Hungarian numbers. So you have very little money to survive for a month or two um, and you learn how, what is poverty and how to deal with poverty, uh, what kind of village life um, um, uh, people live. And this uh, table game was transformed into, um, into a performance which is um, performed mostly in schools in uh, Budapest and the provinces and um, it's pretty much the same like the um, Trianon Treaty game, but you have a real game uh, uh, at a table, you have money, you have to survive, you have to buy, you have to deal, and you form um, a community, but it's pretty much the same. Uh, the, the topic is uh, how, how you survive. Poverty is, is of course, a, a very, very... Um, mm, difficult question in, in today's Hungary. So I, I wanted to um, give you just a few examples of um, performing arts um, practices, contemporary performing arts practices, uh, to um, uh, enlarge a little bit this discussion with the, with the theatre aspect. And maybe now I would like to invite um, uh, speakers to sit next to me and have a uh, discussion. I would like first uh, to ask you um, if you uh, see these reenactments, uh, what is the differences 
because you presented very different materials from so-called official culture, from mass culture, from contemporary performing, co contemporary arts. Sorry. Uh, it, what what is the difference between, first of all, the approach uh, to the to the past, to the original, um, and if you see a difference of um, of of the glorious past and the problematic past or the traumatic past in this regard, uh, approaching the, the so-called official uh, or creating an official um, version of history. Or may maybe we could use the great uh, idea of Hobsbawm, the invention of tradition. So the, the um, um, question of inventing, funding a new tradition uh, how do you see these differences between um, between the approaches uh, to um, to the past? Who would like to start? You have the mics. We have many mics. Oops. Does this work? No, it doesn't work. This one. Just uh, I'm jumping in because we don't have time. So uh, I think you described it really very well, um, uh, and basically you reinforced uh, the, the, the division I made between, let's say, official historical reenactments, which are always about uh, reenacting a glorious past, glorious history, and um, rather artistic reenactments. Indeed, they rather focus on traumatic um, moments, yeah, even if these traumatic and uh, even if these traumatic moments are caused by the glorious history, like it's the example with uh, Jeremy Della. What I find uh, more interesting, because that's quite, quite obvious. Uh, obvious, yeah. What I find, sorry, much, much more interesting is this question of um, mediation versus immediacy, right? Um, and that's something um, that would also connect to what Jody Dean talked about yesterday. Um, uh, when she described the crowd and what actually happens before you talk about politics or political positions, what happens in that crowd. So I think it's this kind of, of immediacy that is happening. And perhaps you notice that um, I really try to focus on a very, uh, very focused uh, definition of reenactment. For me, a, re a reenactment is not necessarily an, art, an artistic work that deals with history. Super interesting, but you know this is not this is not what I would call a reenactment. Reenactment for me is always when something is um, enacted, when something is actually um, uh, even uh, uh, a verbatim performance uh, is a very beautiful example. Uh, I just think about um, some more ideas come to my mind. Obviously, Omar Kamaka, who had an actor basically perform um, a text of the so-called Wannsee Conference where the Nazis decided uh, on the extermi extermination of the Jews. And, um, yeah, perhaps uh, so much. Uh, this, this, from mediation to Im immediacy, I think this is, a, for me, a very interesting uh, moment in reenactment. Yeah, I think um, uh, also in this. Uh, I mean, uh, for, for, for first of all, I don't I don't like uh, the this epistemological division between uh, official and al alternative uh, because I think uh, that it also blurs the myriad of uh, political and uh, ideological um, uh, reasons lying uh, behind both and sometimes uh, in interconnecting uh, both so uh, it is not that uh, the very genre of say uh, media culture or uh, art uh, culture or uh, the culture of ephemeral spectacle as in uh, historical pageants or the game culture as in uh, uh, art um, as in a, a historical uh, battle of reenactment, uh, re reenactment societies, uh, uh, performs a certain politics which is firmly connected to, uh, to the genre or to the media. I think that uh, 
uh, each in each media the the politics and uh, approaches uh, dif differentiate very very much. But speaking about the uh, what you what you termed as uh, like uh, official uh, reenactments so historical pageants and um, uh, uh, the uh, <coughs> events um, of um, repetition uh, in um, these hobbyist uh, uh, groups or, or of uh, reenactment uh, reenactors of uh, battles. <coughs> uh, I think uh, uh, I think that there are there are two things. First, the uh, original. Uh, the original is also. Uh, historical uh, historical invention. There is no such a thing as uh, original. So in uh, many of official historical events to kind of uh, the, the, the processes of uh, reaching a certain historical truth also on a visual uh, uh, scale, on a visual, uh, on a visual level includes uh, the mindset of uh, 19th century uh, historicism that is the obsession with, uh, with the details, the obsession uh, with the epoch, the obsession with the <coughs> constructing the epoch is uh, in as many details uh, as, as possible. But uh, in, another, in another hand, what's uh, uh, also maybe good uh, uh, potential uh, aspects in this uh, classical, maybe rather than official forms of uh, historical reenactments, is this modus of game. Uh, that uh, or modus of play uh, in which the reality can be changed because uh, majority of reenactments uh, are functioning uh, as a, um, what can be translated in, uh, uh, by the use of contemporary logic as a first shooter games you know like it is precisely about this this experience like of uh, of boys uh, having an opportunity to act in a, uh, in a uh, war by uh, means of a certain game. Uh, but uh, the possibility or the potentiality which lies in the very game, in the game itself, uh, is the, <coughs> the, the, the change of rules. <coughs> Because, you know, like if it was sometimes, uh, you know, like a battle between uh, French, uh, French and, uh, and, and France and England, uh, it, it could have sometimes happened within this reenactment society that, uh, you know, like while playing, you know, like there's so much get, get into it that they change also, that they change the, 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 the end, that they change the, uh, the past. So I think that that in this uh, in this play in this pl playful uh, potentiality of uh, reenactment, I mean, it can be actually it can symbolize the potentiality of reenactment uh, as as such, the very the very change, because uh, the majority of uh, uh, travels through time end up as uh, experiences, um, okay, and people. people enriched by a certain like uh, experience of course those who can afford the experience return to the same and uh, non change present and i think the point is to use uh, a certain historical experience in order to uh, be capable to change uh, to change the present or to recall to excavate uh, some historical experience which uh, can help you to kind of shape the present, to kind of really uh, play, not for the sake <coughs> of play, but also through this play, which is also, you know, like sometimes atmospheric and uh, non predictable and contingent and so on, come to the other uh, end, which uh, changes the rea reality in which, in which we are. Um, just one question to add it, uh, because um, you, are, you were talking about fictionalizing. And this change of the reality is fictionalizing, or you agree with the similarity of the terms? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, first I would like to answer to the other questions. So I, I do define this reenactment a little bit broader. So I, I, I know just uh, thinking about reenactment when it's connected to a concrete event, 
historically land because, for example, Trianon is a good example. It is so very fluid, absolutely fluid. You cannot grasp it. It is so very complex, so layered. It is uh, overloaded with something and so on and so forth. So I, for me, it is absolutely valid to deal with it and still put it to this category through this uh, fictionalization and imagination, if you can open up something, because it is so very fixed, it is like, a, like a, as, uh, as, as Gorgito, like a, a pain in the body, so it has to open up. And then I would uh, connect to the first question, whether there is difference between traumatic or glorious past as reenacted, and I think that the function is different. Mm -hmm. And the function, for example, to deal with this traumatic event, to a kind of psychoanalytic analysis, if you if you if you wish, to to think through all this process and open up this fixated and absolutely not narrated event. The other thing I and also to this uh, getting back a little bit to this broadening the term, I I do think that we have to catch up on the on the notion which was introduced yesterday or today, no, yesterday, by Boris Grudan, this uh, temporality. I do think it's quite crucial here because uh, sometimes I do feel that although we are speaking about different temporalities, multiply times, so on and so forth, but still the so-called prime timers, my uh, <coughs> relation is so strongly based in that if we accept this different time, temporality, in the discourse, but in reality, when there are specific expectations, and for example, this approach would not accept it, but other is valid or, uh, or up to date, and the other is outdated, I think this is uh, a hidden non-acceptance of different temporality. And I just would like to go back to the yesterday's uh, reflection that on the word that speaking about trauma, uh, trauma does not lead to anywhere. I think that the opposite is the case. We simply have to speak about this because this is the, this is the starting point which we have to deconstruct. And, uh, and then this, uh, this was the third aspect you asked about the official and alternative or subversive way. I do find difference between the two and especially because the differences in relation to mediation and immediacy, because what the official so-called reenactment denies is the mediation. So I did find that is why this Collingwood differentiation that is a huge difference that you rethink it, or you just think about it as a ready-made, as an object, something which is done, so that is why I did find uh, quite important to show the two different so-called drivers. Mm. Yeah, maybe, 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 uh, uh, maybe only the t the, t the terms uh, should be uh, changed Upgraded. because this, yeah, uh, yeah uh, because this. Uh, so then, political reenactment, let's say. <laughs> maybe because because your story, the BBC you story, the, yeah. Because the, your story you showed uh, about the First World War, BBC, um, yeah. song, it doesn't fit anywhere. So uh, if, if you use the official and the subversive. It's official. <coughs> I, I think it fits the... Uh, what is, uh, I think it fits... Uh, yeah, it doesn't work. <laughs> it works. Like that one. Okay. This one is not loud enough. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think uh, I think it fits the the official. Mm -hmm. uh, the only the only thing is you know like that it also shows uh, the entire you know like uh, variety in the in, uh, that exists uh, of aesthetic of aesthetical of mediation that also exists in the sphere in the sphere of of official. I mean. Uh, uh, BBC, BBC World. Uh, I don't see, you know, like nothing more official than that in terms of like media. May I add one more thing? Just because we, with Inca, we share, we are fan of the Russian revolutionary art, as we discussed, and I just thought that maybe it would be good to speak a little bit about that uh, for those who are not uh, so 
aware of the revolutionary art in Russia, that it is very interesting that it actually was started as a grassroots movement in the Red Army, in the Red Guard, and, uh, and then, uh, so the military gave the, the back, background to it. So it was a lot of rehearsal for that. And, uh, and also that, that it, it seems to me that it was part of this rivalry between Moscow and Petrograd. So it was, in a way, put into the context of this power game between the two cities, Zinoviev in Petrograd and, and Lenin in Moscow. And, uh, and the other thing which I do find very interesting that, uh, that it was a lot of kind of rehearsal to this. So it was the third one or the fourth one. And sometimes, for example, in Fall of the Autocracy, they use lines from the press. So even at the very moment, it was the blurring between the so-called reality or the, or the mediated part of the event. And the third one, which I, I like very much, and in a way it is the precursor to our topic, that they made a, another mass uh, spectacle. It was entitled Blockade of Petrograd. It was made on a, on a small island nearby Petrograd. And it was in the very time when the civil war was going on. And it was the time when, when even foreign troops were in Russia. And, uh, and not just that, but they were born with Poland and they played out this, this blockade. So it was totally blurred, which is not the reality and, and, and which is the reenactment. So this blurring in even absolutely not a new, new fashion. <coughs> Since we have very little time, um, some reactions or questions are welcome. Uh, I, I would generally I would put, put into the context the, the, the topic of, of the whole, whole session. Uh, we uh, opened this problem uh, already yesterday. Uh, I would uh, think of these forms of artistic reenactments and dealing with the past as uh, being one form of this general turn from history to memory, as a forms of memory culture, so that uh, we can make a, a very radical difference with, between uh, reenactment in Petrograd of the, of the revolution, because it is history in actu, it is history performing, there is no difference between what happens in the history and art or uh, theater or artistic forms dealing with the history, but the other way around, history is using art in its creativity. So the event is, uh, 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 of course it is staged, but it is staged by the history. History is the subject. In the, in the case of Jeremy Deller, in the, in the case of what is performance uh, in, in, in the context today of what uh, Ludwig calls general performance, in, in, in which there is a, a turn, economic turn, to the so-called economy of experience, uh, event economy, where uh, 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 performance is a, is a force of production. This is one part of it. Another part of it, in uh, memory, of course, memory relies on testimonies, on the witnesses. There is no historiography who writes history, who is su supposed you know, to, to be competent uh, for the truth of history. Memory doesn't have to rely on the truth. It's, it's the same like in, in, in Roman, like in Cicero, Thucydides, Roman historiographers, uh, when they say history, they mean testimony. And uh, this history is of use because we can learn something uh, out of it. And although it's not necessarily true, it doesn't have to rely on the truth. And it is obviously media critique in general to general <coughs> Deller. It, these are these, these uh, differences, historical differences, in which the history 100 years ago doesn't exist as subject. No, no more. And this is uh, just. Uh, I don't think Tukidis is his. I don't think Tukidis is his testimony. Have, uh, the difference between Tukidis and Tukidis is, is precisely in, uh, in the fact that Tukidis 
uh, puts uh, history on the scene <coughs> and uh, puts the actors and makes the actors speak. You know, he presents the Sidemonian uh, position from um, um, uh, uh, by the words of uh, of the Sidemonian mission to the Athens, and then the Athens the, the Athens Athenian position is represented by how um, the how the assembly responds to this. So he uh, uh, to this in the beginner uh, is uh, the, the first uh, scientific historian. He does not identify with any uh, of the positions he is putting on the scene. And the history is played objectively. So, you know, um, look, in, in German ideology, there is this phrase, there's uh, only one science, and that's science of history. And uh, memory is subjective. It's something totally different. Yeah, I, I agree. But I was <laughs> just a desperate note. <coughs> Uh, uh, but um, uh, um, about the trauma, the trauma is a Freudian concept. Uh, so um, in Freudian theory, uh, trauma is not uh, remembered directly. Uh, it's usually present through by and through the what the Freud calls deck erinnerung, uh, souvenir de uh, in French. Uh, Cover. Uh, Cover uh, memories. Uh, uh, What's the... Recovered. Uh, yeah, it's uh, recovered. So I think that Triadon, for instance, is a decadino. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a construction that is um, covering something that is really yes. wrong. Um, I could say, uh, I will give you a, an example from Slovenia. Um, the official ideologies, the dominating ideologies, have been uh, trying to, 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 to construct into national trauma uh, the extra juridical executions after World War II. Uh, uh, um, the German armies and uh, collaborators were retreating uh, over Yugoslavia from the Balkans and they all came to Slovenia and then they, um, most of them succeeded to get to the allies who were already now, uh, the Allies uh, sent back the collaborators uh, under this uh, well, agreement that they should be judged for the crimes they committed. And uh, most of them were executed without, without uh, judgment, without uh, a fair trial. And of course, there were uh, many civilians retreating with them. And those civilians were also executed. So, um, of course, this is a wonderful um, occasion for creating a trauma, and uh, Sylvia actually was a, <laughs> a scattered uh, in 45 and uh, uh, 46, especially for the, the May and June 45. So, um, but in, uh, this trauma did not succeed to be uh, created. Uh, and my theory is that um, the, uh, that these uh, executions, which are, of course, uh, criminal in their own uh, way, um, um, uh, were covering uh, a real trauma within nationalist ideology, and that is civil war and revolution. You know, uh, brother is killing his brother as a romantic wife. Uh, so, um, the Dickerini look in this case is covering class struggle. The revolution and the civil war. The collaboration was the counter revolution in Yugoslavia. So, uh, maybe this could be a productive approach. For, yeah. I, I, just want to, I, I just want to add that's why I started with the proposal of using the chosen trauma and chosen glory notions, yeah. which are uh, uh, basically self definition of the nation or the big group. And I would like to uh, blur a little bit the differentiation you made. Um, also because these kind of big official events are often created by very prominent artists. And Nikolai Yevrainov was an avant-garde uh, theater maker who included in that performance 8,000 circus artists who made a really avant-garde 
big scale performance. So it's very difficult to make that kind of differentiation from the point of view of the quality or the final product, I think. I'm sorry, we have to finish. Yes, you, you have the last word. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you.